Hello friends and foes. I'm Ginny D and I am here to make some of you very mad by being a dyed hair, woke millennial snowflake female in your tabletop war games. Ah. In this video, I am gonna try and convince you that you should, at least once, play a D&D &D character who is built wrong. That's right, I want you to play a character who isn't optimized. <laughs> I know, I can hear the old guards screaming, but please let me explain myself. I play a character that some people on the internet get upset about. They learn that Ashling is a warlock that does not have Eldritch Blast, for example, and suddenly it becomes their personal mission to make me realize what a huge mistake I've made. This past summer, I got some flack about how I had built Ashling, and I tweeted something rather radical, I guess, based on how strong the response was. Hey, D&D is a game. If I want to build a pretty elf with no hit points and shitty spells so I can tell a story about her with my friends, I'm gonna do it, because it's a game. I was frustrated because here I was just talking about my fantasy magic edgy flower princess and strangers on the internet were acting like I was failing some sort of test. The responses ranged from concern that I just didn't know any better and someone should really teach me how to play the game right to people who were furious telling me that I was not actually even playing D&D. &D. News to me. Now, I think it's totally valid to play D&D &D or any tabletop game in whatever way is fun for you and your table. Maybe you love optimizing characters Maybe figuring out how you can deal the most possible damage in combat or have the highest possible AC or stealth is what's fun for you, and if so, that is fine. I am not here to tell you how to have fun, even though people love to do that to me. And none of these people, to be clear, are at my table. My DM and my fellow party members have no problem with the way that I've built Ashling. All of us are picking skills and spells based on story or what sounds cool, and our whole game is honestly pretty low pressure. But there were a lot of people in my replies who weren't so lucky. They were getting this kind of no you can't energy not just from the internet where, I suppose, we must expect such things, but from their own tables. And that made me really sad. The more I thought about it, the more I thought about how exactly the kind of people who were the most vocal about how others should be playing D&D &D could probably gain really unique and different roleplay experiences by, just once, creating a D&D &D character wrong. Ah. Uh, writing. I do it for these videos, but more importantly, I do it for D&D. &D. And if you're watching this, so do you. That's why Skillshare has sponsored me to tell you all about how their writing classes can help you hone your tabletop chops. Tabletop chops. That's great. That's how you can tell I'm a writer. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on tons of topics for learners of every skill level. I've taken classes on sewing, photography, marketing, and lately I have been taking classes on writing and trying to apply those lessons to my tabletop projects. One class I took recently is Writing Authentic Fiction, How to Build a Believable Character, taught by Sabah Tahir, the author of the Ember in the Ashes YA fantasy series. Sabah was a journalist before she was a fiction author, and to quote her in the class, she's interested in realistically portraying human nature, even if it is in a fantasy world, which is basically what a lot of us are trying to do with our characters in D&D. Sabah teaches a few different character development exercises in this class, and one of them you may recognize from this channel. She suggests conducting an interview with your fictional character, something that I myself did in a recent video with Ashling. There are tons of writing classes that cross over with creating characters and narrative for tabletop games, from classes about generating ideas or complex characters quickly, to classes about building fantasy worlds or putting together compelling plots. It's less than $10 a month for membership, and the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Now, back to writing. All right, I'm sure that was just enough time for the people who disagree with me to get started on their 500 word comments about how wrong I am. So I guess it is time for me to explain what I mean. When I say make a character wrong, what exactly does that entail? For the purposes of this video, I'm talking about creating a character in a way that doesn't break the rules of D&D, but goes against accepted best practices. For example, combining a race with no intelligence bonus with an intelligence-based class, or picking a spell or a sub class that the community in general thinks is kind of useless, or assigning your attributes in a way that runs counter to your class's most important skills, like giving a rogue low dex. 
These things might make your character less effective in combat or in social situations or in skill checks. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should make a character who is bad at everything. I think that with very few exceptions, that would not be fun to play or fun to play with. But I am suggesting that it is okay and even good to try creating a character who has complexity and doesn't look like every other D&D &D character that anyone ever makes. And since the internet loves an ordered list, I have sorted my reasoning into five points. First, weaknesses leave room for growth. I have said this before, lots of people have, but a character having flaws and weaknesses can be one of the most compelling parts of a story. It gives the character something to overcome and somewhere to grow. Let's say you play a clumsy rogue. Their journey as they work to become more dexterous over time, backed up by magic items or attribute bonuses as they level, could be a really compelling character arc. And it gives you, as a player, a goal to pursue. Play a wizard who, for some reason, is struggling to learn anything but divination spells. Play a halfling barbarian trying to prove to the world that the size doesn't make the warrior. Intentionally building in a surprising wrong choice can practically write an interesting story by itself. Which leads me to my second point, shake things up. I'm not saying it's not fun to play an elf ranger or a half-orc barbarian, but some combinations have been played to death, and picking an out-of-the-box combination of features can help your character be unique and stand out from your average PC, or even from the other PCs at your table. Ignoring what you should do opens up a million fun and fascinating opportunities. Just imagine a lizard folk monk, a dragonborn druid, a goliath warlock. Those are stories you might not have heard before and almost definitely haven't played. Played. Third, some of the right choices might not line up with your character's backstory or personality. For example, Ashling may be a warlock, but her personality isn't particularly charismatic. She was raised as an outsider by a weird old witch rejected by her community and relentlessly bullied by her peers, and now she's a fish out of water in a society that she doesn't have the tools to fully understand yet. In short, she's awkward as fuck. But being awkward doesn't prevent you from making a pact with a powerful fey being, and making Making that pact certainly does not make you less awkward. I have no doubt that she will get more charismatic as she learns how to build healthy relationships and how to practice basic social etiquette. But for now, it wouldn't make sense for her story for her to have super high charisma, even though it would make her a more powerful warlock. Along the same lines, people have criticized me for her multiclass into druid, which nobody seems to think is a very good idea. But that doesn't matter to me. She multiclassed into druid not because it was an effective combo, but because her patron is the woman of the soil and deeply connected to nature. Her arcane focus is a bottle of dirt, for God's sake. It just made sense. Not mechanically, but narratively. Fourth, what's the point of being given choices if some of them are wrong? D&D lets you build any character you want. You're allowed to combine any race with any any class. You're allowed to pick your own spells and subclass and assign your own stats. If all warlocks were supposed to have Eldritch Blast, it would be a class feature, but it's not. This point kind of dismantles the framing of this whole video because I think it pretty clearly disproves the idea that there's a wrong way to build a character at all. If it's not against the rules, it's not wrong. Period. Imagine if someone held out a tray of rainbow-colored cupcakes to you and said, hey, take a cupcake, any cupcake, and you said, thanks, I'll take a purple one. And they said, whoa, whoa, you can't pick purple. You have to pick green or yellow. You'd be confused, right? Because they said, pick any cupcake. So do it, pick any cupcake, you're allowed. My fifth and final point is a bit of an obvious one, but despite that, I think a lot of people forget it, or at least they choose not to think about it when they're trying to boss other people around or feel superior. It's a game. It is. It's a complicated game. It's a game that many of us care deeply about, but in the end, it is a game and we play it for fun. As Matt Mercer so eloquently once stated, it is ridiculous to tell someone your fun is wrong. If you would have fun playing a character that isn't optimized, how could that be wrong? Now, whenever I make this kind of video, I know the comments are gonna be full of people who think that they have found the one weak point in my argument, the simple solution to why I'm wrong and they're right, and I should be embarrassed for even making this video. So I just want to address a few little points before I wrap up. First, a lot of people have responded to my defense of Ashling as more narratively than mechanically driven by telling me that I shouldn't be playing D&D. 
And I want to be clear, I think it's a great idea to explore other systems and other games. I have been exploring some with my groups lately, and I totally get that there are systems that are more focused on storytelling than D&D typically is. But also, I like D&D, and so do my friends. We're allowed to like it, and we're allowed to play it, even if you disagree with how we play it. At my table, D&D is not stopping us from creating the characters that we want to create and telling the stories that we want to tell. We're having a good time. Second, obviously, all of this needs to be part of the communication with your party and with your DM. Not every table is going to be hospitable to weird, experimental, flawed characters like we've been discussing today, and that's okay. Every table gets to work out what kind of game they want to have, and if that's an optimized game where everyone tries to maximize their effectiveness, then so be it. But for those of you who may be playing at tables that you wish were a little more open to getting creative and messy with your character builds, maybe this video will help them understand and why you want to play that tiefling paladin or that gnome fighter. And maybe next time you can all try some weird stuff. That sounds like an exciting game to me. I am not telling you how to play. I don't like when people tell me how to play, so I would not want to do that to you. But I just want to gently encourage you, especially if you have always played the right way and tried to build a character who's just the best, to try out building and playing a character wrong. I think you might find that it's a lot of fun. This has been Hot Takes with Ginny D. Thanks for watching. It's time to hit subscribe if you haven't already, and then go argue with people in the comments section, as is our way. I also wanted to mention I recently updated some of my tiers and rewards on Patreon, and maybe you will like them. The link is in the description if you want to go scope it out and maybe join us this month.